Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask Twill. I actually got a couple of really good questions this week, so let me go ahead and get into them. The first question I got is, with the upcoming release of Ubuntu 10.04, which is tomorrow by the way, what do we need to do to upgrade our system? In most cases, I wouldn't recommend doing an upgrade of Ubuntu just because there are a lot of people that have problems with that. I normally do a full reinstall if I'm doing it myself. But in the interest of being fair and answering the question, let's go ahead and tell you how to upgrade your system when it comes out tomorrow. Alright, so my system's actually already running the Ubuntu 10.04 update, but if you happen to be running 9.10 or something earlier yourself, you can go up to System, Administration, Update Manager. Once the release is actually final, you'll be able to come into this Update Manager and you'll have a line here that says Ubuntu 10.04 is available, click here to upgrade now. Basically, that's all there is to it. You click that button, you might have to answer a couple of questions, and then you just wait for an hour or two and it does the upgrade for you. That's another part of the reason that I normally recommend just doing a reinstall. If you've got your system set up correctly in the first place, it won't really matter, you're not going to lose any data. By set up correctly, I mean when you set it up, you put a root partition and a home partition. But just in case you didn't, the upgrade is available and it should work decently. You might have some problems if there were an older version of software you were using that is newer in version 10.04. Moving on to our second question, I've had a lot of people ask me my opinion on GNOME Shell. It's been quite a while since I've tried it, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and show you how to install it on Ubuntu 10.04. I'll also provide a link in the underbar as to how you can install it on your distribution. So let's go ahead and go through how you would install it on Ubuntu 10.04. So as you'll see here, I've got a command already, sudo add apt repository and the PPA name. And what that's going to do is it's going to connect your system to somebody else's PPA so you can download the version of GNOME Shell that is the newest. Once you've added that, you run a sudo apt-get update to make sure you've pulled all the package list down from that site and then you run sudo apt-get install gnome shell. I've already done this beforehand, so I don't have to waste your time. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and run gnome shell dash dash replace, and it will replace your gnome panel with this gnome shell. And there you have it, it's gnome shell. It's replaced your top and bottom panels with just a default blank slate. It's got the currently running applications up here in the top right, it appears when you click on this upper right hand corner it shows you your me menu information. Although in my case it was extraordinarily slow and I'm running on a very fast system. It probably has a lot to do with the open ATI drivers that I'm using. Now you'll notice here in the middle you've got your clock and when you click on it eventually this little box with the calendar will open up. It doesn't appear to have any options to actually set the clock. Not really a fan of that. You don't have the option to move the clock. I'm definitely not a fan of that. In this section you've got your currently active window. And then in the upper left corner, you've got your Activities button. Go ahead and click on that. And as you can see here in the left side of the window, you've got the Find option where you can search through programs, through files, through your whole system. You've got your recently used applications, you've got your different places that you can connect to, and recent items. My recent items actually aren't showing anything because I had to clear them out. There was a problem where I had deleted a couple of files that were in the recent items and it was trying to load them or something. Of course here in the center you've got your one workspace that's open. You have plus and minus buttons at the bottom right where you can add or remove workspaces. You obviously can't use the remove button if there's only one, so let's go ahead and hit plus. I'm going to go ahead and apologize now. I tried to complete the GNOME panel review, but for some reason it just would not run on my system correctly. Everything I was trying to do was taking at least a minute to a minute and a half. It was just really not responsive. It was very buggy. So I'll actually sum up with a couple of things. GNOME panel looks very nice. There's a lot of possibility for it. From what I've read and heard, it uses JavaScript, HTML, and CSS to manage all the layout and the look and feel, which is great for plugin writers because it makes it a lot easier to get into development for it. That said, so far I don't really like the way that everything is really hard-coded in place and can't be changed. The fact that you can't move the clock across the top really really bugs me. I do like that there are now plus and minus buttons in the bottom right hand corner so you can just start removing windows it doesn't matter where you have to click it just starts removing in the correct order. I wasn't actually able to show it but I like that it now moves all the windows up to the next workspace if you delete that workspace that's something that wasn't in an earlier build. Something I'd like to see long term is to be able to look at any of those workspaces and close any of them with a click rather than having to go down to the bottom and close in a certain order. So yeah I'd have to say if GNOME decided they were going to move to GNOME Shell today I would probably be switching to XFCE. I definitely would not recommend trying this out on any production systems you have unless you know how to fix it when you break something. But that's really all I've got to say about GNOME Shell. It's buggy, it doesn't really work 100% on all the systems. In addition to trying it on my desktop, I tried it on my laptop, which is Fedora, and it's a stable system. It wouldn't install correctly, it wouldn't run correctly from the default repo from GNOME. Well, that's all for this episode of Ask Twill. Good luck in your upgrades to Ubuntu 10.04, or in your reinstall if you decide to do that. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.